always thought about what can we do for the state of California or for the country, for the United States. We come here to figure out how to solve some of the world's toughest issues. The mission of the Institute is to advance postpartisanship, where leaders put people over political parties and political ideology. When you have a conventional climate change message, such as the Antarctica is melting and sea levels are going to rise by several feet, does this hit home to people? No. And the reason are these five defenses. You have to penetrate to get around these to get, to get the message to stick home. The distance barrier is that climate change is often communicated as something far out in time. Not just time, it's also distant in space. It doesn't really register, it's somewhere else. 80% of all discussions of climate change is within the framing of catastrophe. In the beginning it worked. Back in 1989 it worked. But then we started to habituate after too much doom, we got what I call apocalypse fatigue. I can't do another apocalypse today, you know. I, I, I'm more important stuff to think about. The next you crash into is a dissonance barrier, when what you do conflicts with what you know. There's no match between knowledge and action. We feel like hypocrites because we live in a way with our cars, with our food, with our houses that we know is not right. What can we do? What, what have they also said that helps us bypass these. What we do need is a new toolbox for climate communications, first social. We have to make climate science a social topic. If one house in a neighborhood gets a rooftop solar panel, studies show that the likelihood of the neighboring houses also getting a solar panel is an order of magnitude higher. Secondly, we might need to make behaviors more simple. For instance, if all printers were switched from one page to two page default, printing, then that would cut power paper consumption with about 15 to 20 percent. Thirdly, supportive framing. Climate communicators, climate scientists and economists have done themselves a great disservice by using negative or backlashing framing. What we need is a better story about the future. You know, only 6 percent of Americans believe that global warming is a solvable problem. 94 percent believe it's not solvable. And because it's not solvable, people don't like to think about it. We need to sell the dream. And the story we need to tell is how we transform and build the cities of the future. We get more for less, more well-being with less waste, less footprint. And um, I hope that uh, California will show the world that this, this is not just possible, but also very smart and profitable. Finally, we need signals that are personal and relevant to us, because climate science have over relied on signals that our PPM of CO2 in the atmosphere and sea level rise in inches per decade, people can't relate to that. So what we need is signals that are personally relevant to us. Secondly, companies need these kind of metrics too. How much dollars gross profit do you make per ton of CO2? We can transform the economy just by shifting that metric 5% each year. If everybody did as Tumra, the climate problem would be solved by 2050. Copenhagen and Denmark have demonstrated that green growth is both smart and possible and profitable. They have grown their economy while taking down emissions with again more than 5% per year in this, period, in this period. So if Copenhagen can do it, why can't Los Angeles?